Wayne from Two Shots of Geek here to show you a little bit about Windows 8, a few of the different changes we've seen and settings that we found. Starting with the start menu, which is a little bit different. You don't have the, uh, the start menu anymore. You actually have a start screen, which you'll access through your Windows key. Brings it up real quick for you. It's actually very fluid. And now here you have all your apps and applications. Internet Explorer has been streamlined to eliminate a lot of the clutter you usually see on your screen. As you can see, your address bar is right at the bottom there. Easy to grab your uh, print tabs when you type in there. Right now we're going to bring up our website. It takes a minute to load on our connection here, unfortunately. And at Two Shots of Geek, you can find a lot more articles on anything pop culture. A little shout out while we're here. As you can see with uh, Windows 8 you can actually restructure some of your tabs and your windows so you can actually work on more than one screen at a time. I'll actually show you a little bit more about uh, having two uh, applications side by side a little bit later. It's actually kind of fun just to play with the uh, settings there and just drag things back and forth. Don't know why, but it is. Back to the start screen there. And as you can look here, you've got a lot of different apps that come kind of preloaded, such as your, uh, right here, I believe this would be your maps. And you can actually turn on location services so it can actually identify where you're at based on the uh, either Wi Fi service you're on or a data connection. As you see on the side there, I still have my website up, so you can actually view the article while you're searching and working on other apps. This could come in handy if you're doing some research or writing an article or little things like that. This is the marketplace, which we were briefly started to load there. It didn't want to load on us all the way, so we, we're not going to show that right now. We'll look, worry about uh, on the second video for you. Here we have the Pictures app, which allows you to organize, input, and upload pictures directly to Facebook, Sky, SkyDrive, Flickr, and other services. I currently don't have any pictures on, on this machine. We'll, another thing we'll actually look into giving you more details later on. That would be your people tab, which gives you information on your contacts. It will actually upload right from the uh, your Windows phone, MSN account, Google, whatever you have. Our music tab is actually, uh, app is actually pretty fun here. Gives you access to all your music, as well as the ability to buy music from the uh, marketplace. With Xbox Music. You're probably noticing some rendering issues here with the uh, with Windows 8. That has a, most likely to do with this being a release preview. And apparently the video recording software doesn't keep up too well with that. Take a look at the weather here. You can get your forecast. And here in San Diego, it's almost always sunny with a little bit of clouds. And they give you quite a bit of detail if you really want to break down into the, uh, the weather patterns there. And traveling. So you actually have an app dedicated to travel. So you can actually get information on where you want to go finding hotels, so forth, information about the loc locale as well. 
makes it a little bit easier to travel a vacation if you actually want to want to plan a vacation out get information about that place finances those will give you information about current events in the news related to finances little way to kind of watch the uh, the market growth Windows 8 seems to have a little bit for everybody in there it gives you much of the same power as Windows 7 same power actually as Windows 7 just with more flexibility with the inclusion of the apps you've got your regular news section here as well so if you want to look for the standard edition news versus just your finances it's all right here for you As you can see, there's always plenty to read on the news. And next we can go look at our sports here. Gives you access to actually information on not only sports in general but you can actually customize it to your team and we can get the breakdown on scores records all that fun stuff And here we're looking at the latest uh, Padres game with the uh, Seattle Mariners. And we're going to add our favorite team, which we here in San Diego would be the Padres. That way we can keep them right there on our favorites list and get easy access to the win-loss ratio, team information, roster, All the fun stats as us sports sports fans really enjoy. There is the camera out there if you have a camera connected to your computer such as a laptop or a tablet. We have Xbox Live, which is really fun. You get to play some games, earn some achievements actually in Xbox Live. Download games from the marketplace in here, view your achievements, your friends. So it obviously gives you information not only from the PC side but the Xbox side, the Windows Phone side all comes together under one Xbox uh, location for you. We have a calendar to kind of help you uh, organize your life, keep your work schedules in, in track, in check. We have the email up there as well, so you can actually have full access to your email right on the screen there. And we have network. So adding a network is kind of fun on Windows 8. It's not much different. You choose your network, you type in your password for your encryption key. What's interesting is you have a little icon up here to your right. If you click on that icon, it looks like a little eye. That'll actually show you the password that you're typing in. A little bit better than the checkbox on Windows 7 where you actually had to choose to have it checked to show it all the time or not show it. This way you can click on it to double check everything if you need to while not being ex exposed as much. 
Other than that, connecting to a network is pretty simple. And it will prompt you for um, sharing if you're on a local sharing data such as uh, devices and data if you want to share it with other computers on the same network. So depending on whether you're in a public place or some place like home or work, you may want to choose a different setting. Windows Explorer gets a little bit of a refresh as well. As you can see, you have the ribbon interface, which gives you access to copy and paste functions. Uh, you got a mo lot more access to just about everything right there, right up in front. The ribbon interface obviously coming from Office 2007 and Office 2010. You got your sharing options there, viewing options. Everything's right there at the tip of your fingers. It makes it a little bit easier to work with your files in Explorer. It also makes it easy to find files as well. So you can see your search tab is right there in the top corner again. To the right, same place it was on Windows 7. As you can see, finding hidden files are actually easier. You just click the checkbox there. You don't have to go into the menu system as you did in Windows 7 and XP Avista. You still have your library set up just like you would with the uh, yes you had with uh, Windows 7. It's actually easier to create new libraries and add locations to the library now. The ribbon interface makes all that possible. Media files, you have the play commands right up on top. So within the ribbon you can actually choose to play a video and have it launch Windows Media Player or your favorite media application. all your properties and settings. If you want to get into more detail, they're up there for you as well. You have maintenance tasks built right in to optimize your machine, keeping a best keeping a good running condition for you. Obviously not as good as having a uh, technician take a full look at it, but it does give you some uh, some unique, unique features there that really help. Scheduled tasks are going to show on there for you as well. So if you have something that needs to be done in the Action Center, it will actually give you more details. You can click on that to open the Action Center. Windows Defender is actually back. So this time it's actually more or less taking the approach as Windows uh, Security Essentials. So as of right now with the release candidate, you really don't need an antivirus software program to run as Windows Defender will help protect, protect your system from majority of threats. It's still recommended to have a full, full on antivirus solution such as McAfee, Norton, ESET. Those will all do a much better job, but at least you have some protection built right in. has all the same basic features and settings as the previous versions of Windows Security Essentials. And scanning is actually fairly quick. Here we're taking a quick look at the copy fun functions for you. Copying files in Windows 8 is actually much, much faster than they were in Windows 7. As you see, we're actually copying several video files there and it's 
done very quick. You also get more details in the uh, dialog box there as well. Now we're taking a look at settings. This is where we get in some really interesting features here. Um, as I mentioned earlier, you can just start typing, pull up your settings, apps, whatever you want to search for. When you're in that start screen, just start typing and it'll come up for you. So we typed in settings. Under the settings tab on the right, we actually get a full list of all kinds of things from the control panel, both the desktop control panel as well as the um, start screen app side control panel. Actually seems to be two different sides of that. A lot of the same functions are found in both, but it is kind of an interesting scene there. So right now we actually uh, looking at a quite a bit of a list there. So right now we're typing in repair to get bring up some repair options for you. So you can actually restore your PC or refresh your PC very easily. What that'll do is actually, uh, as you can read the screen there, basically wipe out all the user data for you and create a flat, fresh installation of Windows 8 for you. You can do so without deleting your files or do a destructive as well and delete your files. You have a few different personal personalization options for you. You can create an account for your a picture for your account. You can link your account actually directly to your Windows Live ID and actually use that as your user account. You can choose to turn on certain apps, turn off certain apps. You have privacy controls so if you don't want certain things showing up on the screen there you can use those. Devices under the uh, screen here will show you every device connected to your computer. Ease of access tools in case you need um, help seeing, uh, seeing things on the screen or a screen reader. And home group is back. Makes it easier to share files between multiple computers at home. Windows update can be accessed right there in the, in the app side of things as well as on the desktop side. It's actually really quick um, access for searching for files and settings. If you start typing, it starts giving you a list that quick. Reminds me, reminds me a lot of the uh, Just Type feature built into the WebOS tablet from HP. Unfortunately, that uh, tablet didn't ever made it very far. So these are the advanced recovery tools for you here. And I'm actually going to launch one in a minute here to give you a little bit more information. So right here we're going to create a recovery drive. And grayed out right now because we don't have a recovery partition. But you do have the option to add the recovery partition that was came with your computer. So if you bought an HP or a Toshiba that has a recovery partition built into that hard drive, you can add that to your recovery drive and save it right to a flash drive so you can restore your machine back to factory settings or back to a cleaner version of Windows in case you get a virus or software corruption that has a major issue. That's actually something I'm really lo looking forward to trying out fully. And in this case we just did a quick recovery drive very quick actually it was around 256 megabytes in files so it was actually pretty quick Windows Windows 8 stores a lot of the files directly on the hard drive in a safety pop it's kind of a safety pocket for you if you will it allows it to restore things back for you without having to have all the files on the flash drive And just like that, in a matter of minutes, it'll actually complete 
very quickly for us. And you can use that, I believe, if, you're, if I'm not mistaken, you can actually boot up right with that recovery drive, or you can launch it from within Windows and it'll prompt you to restart the computer. So adding features to Windows 8 is actually pretty easy. You would just, uh, as you know, there'll be two different versions of Windows 8. You have your standard edition as well as the professional edition. And adding more features will just type, your, type in a product key. Kind of like the Windows Anytime upgrade. So, these are some more of the standard standard uh, control panel options for you. You have your admin of programs, troubleshooting options. All these are designed to help keep your computer in good running condition. These were introduced into Windows 7 and they've been improved upon in Windows 8. Color management is actually really fun. Um, this allows you to set your monitor to be the way you need it to be. So if you've got pictures and you work on pictures a lot or video, you can actually keep your uh, keep your screen screen to the same color markings as the photograph you're working on. So you're, when you go to print, you get a much better, ac more accurate print. Administrator tasks have much of the same. Uh, same tools we're used to. So your firewall options are in there for you as well as the um, memory diagnostics, you can check your services, components, you know, computer management, disk drives, all that's easily accessed there for you. And your firewall settings are very similar to what you saw on Windows 7, but it does give you a few more extra features, extra settings you can tweak. Again, your devices and printers are much like they were under Windows 7, on the desktop side anyways. Device manager is very much the same. You have gadgets available, you can dock those right to your desktop, as we have seen in Windows 7 and Windows Vista. Changing location settings such as languages and localization information is actually very easy to do under there. Same thing with the keyboard there, you can change uh, your input, input language. And just quickly, there's a few options for you more than a few. Performance information is back, so you can still get your Windows Experience Index for you to give you an idea of how, what your computer's performance level is. You can just uh, adjust visual effects right there and or you know Windows do them for you. Usually keeping a balance and letting Windows handle it is just fine. Windows 7 file recovery is nice. You can actually restore files that were backed up in Windows 7 right into Windows 8. Um, you also have the storage spaces here which allows you to combine hard drives or other storage locations whether it be on a network or local into one solid storage space to help organize your files a little bit easier. As we only have one hard drive on this computer it's a little harder to do that. As you can see, a lot of the same uh, same options are here in your control panel. Programs and features are much the same. You can choose to un uninstall programs very easily. Turning Windows features on and off is also very easy to do right within the uh, programs and features options like as it was in Windows 7. 
Uh, you'll also notice Flash Player has actually got a control panel now. Usually you'd have to, re have to install Flash immediately, but it seems to be there when you install Windows 8 now. You have your sync center so you can sync data very easily between uh, certain phones, other devices. Your notification area so you can choose what shows in the lower right hand corner of your screen in the no notification section. Down on your taskbar. And we have the Network and Sharing Center, which will give you more information on your network connections, how you're sharing files, home group settings. And back to the start screen there. As you can see, some of the tiles are actually populated with information from the different apps I have. You have some icons on the side there. That'll, if you move your mouse over to the side there, you can get those to pop up. So you can share information. You can access some of the settings and control options for you. You can also choose to show some more of the advanced uh, options on the start tile on the tiles there. So the administrative tools by default are turned off here, but you can turn them on. There you go, they just popped up. You can also access the power options here to make it a little bit easier to shut down the computer. Alternatively, you can go up to your name in the top right hand corner, log off, hit up on your arrow key or drag the screen up and log off. Windows 8 also does a better job of installing updates for you and only prompting you to restart your computer when absolutely necessary. You have security policies for those that are doing network administration. These give you a lot more control over the users on how they're going to use, use the machine. You also may have noticed BitLocker is there for you as well. And that's always good coming back to see security there. And that's a quick look at Windows 8 for you.